Hello and welcome to episode 6 of series 1 of Master League Story Mode. That's it, we're back again. It's Monday. It's time for another episode, so let's see how we do. Now in the last episode, episode 5, we left you on the cliffhanger of there being a new scout report. Now normally in Master League that wouldn't be very interesting, but if you've been paying attention to the series, you know that a scout report in Master League Story Mode is vital. Because Tim Sherwood, the manager of Blackburn Rovers, is only allowed to deal with teams that he's had connections with. So that very quickly gives us only Tottenham, Aston Villa, Watford and Norwich to deal with. So outside of those four teams, oh and also Valencia, and that's slightly more complicated, but it does work just about within the rules. But outside of those, outside of those teams, the only players we can work with are ones that the scouts have brought back for Tim. So it's going to be really exciting to see... Who we've got. So without further ado, let's very quickly move into the negotiations. Into the scouting report. Now, we sent our scouts out to the Netherlands to find us a young attacking midfielder. And we'll see who they came back with. Okay, wow. Interesting. So it's Victor Fischer. Now, I know a little about Victor Fischer. He is a very promising player. Absolutely. Really, really exciting young player. Now, he's more... As the playing style here suggests, of a you know a goal-scoring winger, a centre forward really. But at 21, he it would be difficult for us to pass up. Um, he's not, again he's not the attacking midfielder we're after, but he is of exceptional quality. Um, he's a good passer. He's a good dribbler. His finishing could do with improving, but he's not far off 75 finishing, which I. You know, I feel is, is is the low limit, really, for a striking player. But he's quick, he's got a good explosive power, and actually 75 body balance for a young attacking player is pretty decent. So, I think we're definitely going to put him in our favourites. He's not an obvious choice, as we are looking for an attacking midfielder. So, let's see who else we've got here. Uh, Sherman. Nothing really standing out in terms of stats here. Not particularly bothered by that choice. And uh, Samek as well. Another 69 rated. Good dribbler. Explosive power is good. Potentially a good passer. But again, we need something a little bit more fully formed. And I was hoping for... I know Victor Fisher is a great example. I was hoping for a, you know, an already decent but young and mouldable player. Um... He looks like he can play as an attacking midfielder. I imagine he probably slots in at around a 70 overall as an attacking midfielder. But obviously he's more at home as a centre forward or a winger. Again, we've put him in the favourites. So we'll consider him. And I expect to hear back at least one more time from this scout from Holland. So it's going to be interesting to see what we come back with. Now, uh, in the comments from our, I think it was our second or third video, Felix made a great shout and he reminded me that actually, when we were looking through Valencia, who are available as a team to uh, do some transfer dealings with because of Tim's connection with Gary Neville, his ex-England teammate. Uh, anyway, Felix, very kindly in the comments, pointed out that I neglected to consider Bacali, who as a 19-year-old pacey winger. Look at that, 88 explosive power, 86 dribbling. Exciting, exciting young player. Should definitely be worth considering. So I'm going to add him into the favourites. We're sort of getting to the point now. With only oh, just over a week until the end of the transfer window. Where I really want to queue up four or five decent transfers. And um, you know make a decision there. And I might actually do a special episode asking you all who you think I should sign. But in terms of transfers... That's really all I can do for now. Uh, I think we might have some outgoings to deal with. Yep, Conway. Uh, yep. A nice mill there. I mean, we're going to be... Uh, we've got 8 million. We could definitely afford Fisher, who, you know, technically could be out of our price range usually. But we've managed to sell off a lot of the Deadwood. And we've accrued just over £8 million, which puts us in a great position financially. Guthrie, we're going to keep him, definitely. £3 million is... You know, interesting, definitely, but we'll, we'll keep him. So we're going to play this game, and then I think we really need to make some proper 
solid transfer bids for our next players. So let's just keep moving for a second. On to the next game, which looks like we're going to be travelling down south to the southwest to Ashton Gate to take on Bristol City, which will not be an easy game. And I know that from experience. So let's see how we're doing. Now, in terms of our team, oh, we're not looking great. Now, one thing also, Felix, the best commenter so far, and out of our very few commenters, in fact, he is the only commenter so far, he pointed out rightly that we're looking a little bit weak in terms of centre-forward backup. Now, Jordan Rhodes here is looking tired. He's on a downward blue arrow. If we had another option, I'd probably go for him. I don't think Nathan Delfonso is ready to start as a centre-forward. I'm going to stick with him here because we just don't have any other options, but it would be nice to have another option at centre-forward, so that's definitely something to consider. Clinton is also tied. It gets very congested in this period in terms of fixtures. Um, I'm going to bring in Chris Taylor for his first start of the season. He's a decent winger. He can whip a ball in. Veratu, who's been in great form, scoring his last two games. He's on a red, so we're happy to leave him in there. Guthrie and Evans, we'll keep him in there for now. And Hanley, unfortunately, is on a downward arrow. Now, we had this problem in the first game. He is much better, a much better centre-back than Kilgallen. But do we keep him in on a downward arrow? I don't think we can. I generally tend to take him out. So we're bringing back in the veteran, who lost us the first game, to be fair. But... um. We've got a lot of players who are very tired here, and if we can bring anyone else in just to make sure that our subs can have the impact we need them to. I'm going to bring in Olsen at left-back, who's a capable cover at left-back. That's fine. Um, looks like our biggest problems. Generally, generally the, the centre-back can laugh, last a whole game, even with that sort of fatigue. The right-back might struggle, but we don't really have anyone else who can play there. Low at 65. Yeah, I'm going to bring him in. Because very rarely can a right back, right back last the entire game with that sort of fatigue. Rhodes should be fine. So just quickly looking at Bristol City. No one particularly takes my fancy. All I can obviously see is they're playing five at the back. So they should be pretty tricky to break down. Um, they're not playing what I would consider their best player in Khadija. Who is their strong centre forward. Who's on the bench. 71 rated. So that gives us a little bit of uh, optimism there. We're playing away in our lovely blues, but let's just get straight into it. We're looking for a good result today. The last game was disappointing. Um, some defensive frailties. I don't want us to be a team, and I'm sure Tim doesn't either, who has to score one more than the opposition, but we are focusing on the attack. So let's see how we do. Strong. In the centre midfield from Guthrie. He's got Rhodes here. Takes his time. He can't see the pass. Oh, Kilgallen a mistake again. I think with Kilgallen, if he gets the ball, we just need to be playing it very simple. Now, Olsen, the stand-in left-back as well. Playing two new players in our wing-back positions. Oh, he tries too much there. Could be caught out here. This is not looking good. Great tackle by Lowe. Needed that. And another great tackle by Lowe. But no. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay, so it's been a sloppy start. Now, Olsen, can he craft the break? Vera two. There's a lot of pressure on him in this game. Does well to get away from Brian. Good ball through to Marshall. He can't quite get onto it. That's unfortunate. Vera too. Great run through the midfield. He really does need to be our main man in this game. Guthrie finds himself some bit of space there. Ships it out wide to low. The central midfielder playing it right back. Does well to hold onto the ball. Back out to Evans. Vera too. Oh my word! Jordan Veritu. I did not expect that. He was given, what, maybe inches, centimetres, millimetres of space. Just enough space. Okay, it was it was a country mile. They all backed off, expecting him to charge forward. All he did was cut back inside. 
and it's a curling shot almost directly at the keeper and that is some of the worst goalkeeping we have seen this season so far. But Veratu, full of confidence, on great form. All he did was just, just delay his dribble almost. Hansen stepped out but it's weak defending and the goalkeeping is just truly, truly awful. But that's 1-0. Duffy against Wilbraham again. Comes off second best once more, but just about the ball. Falls back to Steele. Oh, Guthrie. That's risky. Just about comes away with it somehow. It's ball over to Veratu. Can he get there? He can. Makes his way back inside. The curler. Oh, it's unfortunate. It's good defending there from Bristol. Taylor almost wins it back in the box. Good pressure here from Blackburn. Coming into the end of the first half. You've kept the pressure on. Kept that 1-0 lead. That's good play. Nothing spectacular, sure. But just enough to keep us in it. So into the second half. It's been relatively comfortable. Veratu, as we expected, has been the danger man. He's really been having his way with this central midfield. Early ball into Olsen, to Rhodes. Oh, he can't quite bring it down. It's unfortunate. Good ball. Rhodes really strives on those balls, those early balls over the top. If he can get a touch in that sort of area, then he is unstoppable. Good play by low. Strong play. Can't quite win it, though. That's unfortunate. Great play by Olsen there. Oh no, unbelievable. How did that even happen? We just slacked off. Just really slacked off there. Olsen stepped in well to win the ball, but then it's a poor ball to Guthrie. He was unaware of the player behind him. And that's actually a decent first time ball through. But as with the first goal, with Veritu managed to curl it straight into the keeper. Steal at fault there, really. That's poor goalkeeping. Guthrie to Veritu. Steps away from his marker there. Into Taylor. Great ball through from Rhodes. Chris Taylor, right footed finish. 2 0. Not 2 0. 2 1. <laughs> that was a lovely bit of play from Blackburn there. Slick passing. Good interchange. And the ball through from Rhodes. Split the defence. And. Um, Deserve it, maybe not, but uh, it's great play. Good ball out from Veratu. Quick little ball in from Taylor. Goes for the 1 2. Little flick from the outside of his boot from Rhodes. Normally the scorer, now the creator. It was a simple finish on his right from Chris Taylor, making his first start of the season. But that's a nice little slip ball there from Rhodes. Good stuff. And as I've said many times before, now all we've got to do. Let's keep hold of this. We're playing an attack and we're playing a counter-attacking style. Lest lest we forget that Tim's entire strategy is based on breaking away from an attacking team and hitting them on the break. So it shouldn't be a problem really, but it has been so far this season. Hopefully he can hit people on the break because he is, if nothing else, and he is literally nothing else, but he is quick. Okay. 70th minute. Let's just keep it calm. Keep possession. Henley, first choice right back, is now on. He's a good player. Ball into Delfonso. Decent ball through into Coiter. Oh, he couldn't quite take it. That's unfortunate there for Bristol. <laughs> a calamity of errors there for Bristol City. But Coiter, the substitute, is there to help himself. To that very fortunate and very easy finish. The substitutes linking up Delfonso and Coiter. Steele, pleased, obviously. Looks like we could be in for our second win of the season here. Great stuff. Do we need to see that? It was a bit of a comedy goal, really. Ball come through to Coiter. His touch is way too strong. The Bristol centre back, I don't know why. He could let it go out. It was a miscommunication. Well, oh, that's a low. It's a good ball out to Olsen. 
Oh, he's hacked down there. It's got to be a free kick. And rightly so it is. It's a rare, rare card. Olsen with the long ranger. Oh, the keeper can't hold it. Delfonso tries to pounce. And that should be full time now. And it is. A convincing win there from Blackburn. A dodgy goal for the second. A great goal for the third or the first. I can't remember. But generally a good performance. Let's see how the stats do. Um, yeah, okay. Bristol only allowed one shot on target. Our pass completion, not great. Possession, pretty equal. I'll take it. Beratu again, the man of the match. He ran things when he was on the pitch. He's a class above most of these players, really. Rhodes, disappointing, maybe. Uh, Koita came on and scored that scrappy goal. And that takes us up to fourth. Excellent. Okay, so... What have we got here? One, two, three, four, five days until the end of the transfer window. It's getting serious now, so we're really going to have to put some bids in and really decide we've got 8.2 million left. So we can probably afford to maybe buy two of these players. So let's go back to our favourites and see what we're looking at here. Pierre, he came out of one of our uh, scouting missions. And um, although he's a creative playmaker, he is... By trade, a right side of midfield, and we don't need that. Diamante, I've said I am interested in. He's a wild, exciting player. Um, he would be a good attacking midfielder, but he's not one for the future. He's a good passer. He's great from place kicks, but not exactly what we're after. DePaul, now he is a strong, explosive, and quick attacking midfielder. His passing leaves a lot to be desired, as does his finishing, but there's room to improve there. And uh, I'm leaning towards him, especially as a young attacking midfielder. That is exactly what we're after. So we're going to put in a bid for him. Now, Bakali, who came out of a great suggestion by one of the commenters. Um, he's 19 years old, so he's got a lot of room to improve. He, again, is lacking, like DePaul, in a passing and, and finishing ability. But in terms of raw speed and agility... He's definitely one to watch. So I'm going to put in a bid for him. Just see how we do in terms of cost. Victor Fisher would be a great signing. Um, he has got a lot of potential. So absolutely we're going to have to put in a bid for him. And Ulari as well from Watford is potentially the backup striker that we need. He adds something a little bit different to Rhodes. He's, he's going to be there for the knockdowns. He's you know, six foot four, six foot three, body balance 90 to 93, which is unprecedented. That is a very strong striker. So I think we'll put in a bid for him. Um, and other than that, you know, with only five days to go, unless we hear something back from the, the scout, that's as good as we're going to get, really. So there's not much else we can do. I'm tempted to go back in from Adama Traore, who from Aston Villa we went through on a loan. Um, let's see if we can make a bid for him. Because him and G on either side as the wingers would be very exciting. So we'll put in a bid for him. So, wow, that that is... You know, I'm excited. I'm really excited. That's five good bids that we've got in there. DePaul, really the player that we need. He's not the creative attacking midfielder that we want. But actually with Guthrie and Veritu behind him, he's got the power... And the speed to really influence the game behind the striker. And I think we can improve his weak spots. You know, he's 72 low pass, 72 finishing. There's definitely room for improvement. So we'll see how that goes. So let's keep things moving. Okay, so. We're on to match day five. Up against Cardiff City. Another away game. Another game down south as far as Blackburn are concerned. Let's see how we're doing. Now Marshall instantly, we're going to have to drop him. And that is a shame because he's been playing well recently. Question is, do we move in G over to the right, play Taylor on the left, or do we go for the raw pace of Delphonse? And I think we're going to go for the slightly more craft of Taylor and play in G, who missed out completely on the last game. Um, in terms of the defence, we're looking okay. Evans, a bit tired, but we will start him. 
And I think we're good to go there. So it's the battle of two teams with slightly dubious owners. Cardiff City, who um, there was a lot of controversy over the kit, kit colour change. And the Venkis, obviously, at Blackburn have been an owner who's really split opinion. You know, they've in, in many ways, they've bought in money and, and prospects to Blackburn. But in many other ways, they've really let down the fans. So it's a, it's a, it's a clash of the dodgy owners. And let's see how we get on. Hanley cuts out the pass into Veratu, Veratu, Evans, back into Veratu. The ball's on there to Rhodes. It must be 1-0. It is 1-0. And that's textbook stuff there from Blackburn. That was, it was too easy. Much too easy. Give Veratu that much space with Rhodes ahead of him. And that Jordan to Jordan axis is always going to pay off. Well, I say always going to pay off. It hasn't paid off so far. Easy ball in there from Veratu. Accepts the 1-2 from... I think it was Evans. And then Rhodes has made a really intelligent run between the central defenders. And he does not miss from there. It's a decent little chip ball over from Rhodes. Strong in there from Spur. Continues the run. Rhodes with a lovely little dinked finish there. It's all a little bit too easy here for Blackburn. who have come away on the road and really decimated Cardiff in the first... What is it? Ten minutes? Can't be more than that. Let's take a look at what happened there. Rhodes with his second. It was Henley there who came in strongly from the left back position. Good ball into Rhodes from Taylor. And it's a beautiful little left footed dink of a chip over the keeper. He probably didn't even need to do it. He could have slipped that away on the floor. The keeper hesitated, came out hesitated. Poor positioning. I think I mentioned very early on that Evans was never going to be in for his uh, skills as a player. Rhodes to NG. Oh, it's 3-0. Brilliant play there. Who gets, I believe, his second goal of the season. And he is stoked as he should be. Let's play this again. At that time, it was actually just Veritu who nicked in there. I think that was the play before that Evans was involved. Veritu... Through to Rhodes, who turns creator. Then G, straight at the keeper. But even that manages to go in. And that's 3-0. Oh, no. Easy for NG. And that is an absolute calamity there for Cardiff. This is getting embarrassing now. In G with his second. Let's take a look at that. The Cardiff keeper looks to play it out quickly, but in G is in there like a, like a ferret, like a ferret up a drain pipe or whatever the expression is, and it's a calm chip over the keeper to add insult to injury. And that's half time. Excellent play there from Blackburn. Been too easy really, if anything. Veritu and G Rhodes. All having a great time. Um, you know, the stats aren't incredible. We've had four shots on target, four goals by the looks of it. Which is great return, obviously. Is there going to be a limit to the goals in this game? Hopefully, from Blackburn's perspective, no. Could be a chance for Cardiff, no. Spur in really well. Spurs had a great game. I mean, everyone's had a great game, really. Henley... Through to NG. He's got the pace to get away from Fabio. Ex-Man United player. Cuts back inside. On his left foot. Left foot curler. Marshall equal. NG full of confidence. After his two goals in the first half. Is there anything this boy can't do? Blackburn fans. Full of hope for him. NG. Oh, he's full of confidence. Look at that. A left foot volley. It's just everything's falling to us now. Rhodes inside. 5-0. Am I even celebrating? Yes. Is Rhodes celebrating? Of course he is. The Flying Scotsman with his first hat-trick of the season. Unbelievable scenes here. NG in there embracing him. A little bit of Frenching. Marshall looks like he wants to go home. As he probably should. 
as I said, everything falling to Blackburn here. Evans able to take the ball out with ease into Rhodes. Just cuts inside just too easily. And it's a left foot finish. Coiter's just come on. He's caught in possession. We don't want to get sloppy here. A clean sheet. Steele wants a clean sheet. Oh, and he looks like he might just get one with Saidi. Missing what amounts to little less than an open goal. It's a good ball through, though. Whittingham. He's got Hanley with him. He steps in incredibly easily. He's able to put a potentially risky ball back to Steele. But Blackburn keep possession. We want to release the, the pace of Coiter and Delfonso here. It's a good run from Delfonso. Could it be his first goal for the club? It's not. It's not. That's classic. Classic Delfonso. He had the pace to get away from his man. He made a good run into the centre, but the finishing was off. Shola Amiobi. Ex Newcastle. It's a ball in. No way! For God's sake. Steele gutted. Sherwood gutted. Me gutted. We wanted the clean sheet. 5 1. Still sounds good, but it's not what we wanted. And we'll call it a 5-1. The referee's decided it's too painful. And he's rightly stopped proceedings at 5-1. It's a potentially landmark win for Blackburn Rovers and Tim Sherwood. As they show that they can really tear a team apart if given the opportunity. And clinical in front of goal. Five goals from eight shots on target. That's great stats. Jordan Rhodes racking up the first eight of the season. They don't come along too often. So, another win for Sherwood's Blackburn. And that keeps us solidly in third place. Just two points behind the leaders, Hull City. Who you would expect to be a strong team in the championship this season. With they've, they've got a really good squad. As I'm sure we will see later on when we get around to playing them. But once again, we're well ahead in terms of goal difference. Well, not well ahead. But we're too ahead in terms of goal difference. Which could be important come end of the season. So, it's time to look at our monthly report. Now, Jordan Rhodes with six goals in five matches. What a return. What a player. As I said at the beginning, I was pretty confident that he would be of the class needed to dominate the championship, and he has been. And look at this. Just behind him are two lone signings, Clinton and Jordan, with three goals each. That's a great return from, what, 1.5 million in wages? So, that's shrewd business there from Sherwood. He's tapped into his old clubs and... Bought through two young, exciting players. In terms of assists, we've got Marshall, who's been... He's been decent out on the right, and that's what he's there to do. He's not there to score goals. He's there to assist, and he has done. Uh, Rhodes, Veritu, and Taylor. Taylor's done pretty well when called upon due to, you know, fatigue. Let's have a look at how we're doing. So, yes, the long pass, as expected, has been the most efficient. That's part of our strategy. Break quickly. With long passes, although actually we've been of a quality that's not really needed to counter-attack in the way that maybe this we're set up to. And actually, we're sort of halfway between that and a possession game. But, you know, that's fine. I don't mind how that's panned out. Veratu topping the charts in passes, dribbling and passes received. So, he has been the player that we hoped he would be, which is great. Jordan Rose with a 30% strike rate, 6 goals from 20 shots. That's great. You know, if we can keep that going through the season, he's going to be a 30-goal man easily. Jordan Veritu, 50% shot rate. That's great. I mean, he's normally had positions on the edge of the box where he's been able to curl it in. And if we can keep getting him those chances, I think we could keep seeing a few goals. So, we're right down to the wire here in terms of negotiations. Oh, that's disappointing. That's really disappointing. We've not got either of the players we wanted there. DePaul and Fisher are the ones that we needed, and we're not going to be able to sign them now. Which puts us in a difficult position, really. So I think that's all we've got time for today, and I'm going to have to deal with this conundrum and this real issue in that actually the two potential attacking midfielders that we had plan to sign in Fisher and DePaul we're not going to be able to get it's too late in the window so we're going to have to choose from the three that we've got there we might have a chance to put in one late bid but other than that I think we're done here so we'll see you in episode seven 
where hopefully well, we're going to make some signings and it's going to be attacking focused but it's not going to be the ones we wanted but anyway we'll see how we do and uh, on that slightly low note and you can probably hear it in my forlorn voice I will see you in a bit <laughs>